I just took this video of one of my athletes, uploaded it, waited a day or two, and then I got this full analysis out of that one video, together with six AI enhanced video files to analyze the sprint technique of my athlete. These types of analysis used to not only cost an arm and a leg because they happened in a biomechanics lab, but it also used to be very time intensive, placing markers, rigging the model. This however can now be a thing from the past, thanks to the guys at View Motion and Altis, who created something awesome with the help of AI. Motion IQ is a video based tool that uses machine learning and computer vision to present coaches with accurate data that helps them better understand the kinematics and kinetics and apply that to their coaching and training sessions. At the moment, Motion IQ is still in its beta phase, which means there is still some work that needs to be done to further optimize the program. The Motion IQ program runs on the View Motion platform, so like most software, before you use it, you'll first need to create an account. You just go to the Motion IQ login, create an account, and then you should be redirected to the following overview page. On the left side, you'll see the different tabs to navigate through the program, like the importing videos tab, the creating teams and athletes tab, or the reports tab. On the upper right, you can find the tab to customer service, besides that, the tab to buy your AI credits, and finally, on the far right, you have the settings tab, where you can view your profile, edit it, view your billings, or log out the program. Now, before we go into deeper detail on what you can do within each step and what types of analysis you can get out of a video, we first need to discuss the video you'll be importing and analyzing because there are a few boxes you'll need to tick if you want a usable video. First, you'll need a video that is filmed at a 4K resolution and with at least 60 frames per second frame rate. A lot of phones at the moment of recording this video are already able to do that, but there are still some out there that don't. So make sure your phone or camera is able to record in these settings, or even better. Second of all, you'll need some markers slash cones in your scene that will tell the AI how it needs to interpret all of the moving pixels. You'll need five cones that are at least 12 inch high or around 30 centimeters. Two cones will be placed where you want the measurement to start, one on the left side of the lane and one on the right. Two cones will also be placed where the measurement will be finished, once again, one on the right and one on the left side of the lane. Depending on whether you want to test a 20 meter or a 10 meter, the final cone will be placed at either the 10 meter mark for a 20 meter sprint or at the five meter mark for a 10 meter sprint or acceleration. Just make sure that the last cone, the middle one, will be placed at the line furthest away from the camera. Third, and as a final step, put the camera or phone at 10 to 12 meters away from the lane in which your athlete will run. Make sure the camera records the full scene, that means from 1 meter behind the starting cone to 1 meter after the finish. Now you just press record and let the athlete sprint. Now that that is done, we come to the importing of the video. You either import a video file via your laptop or PC or via the View Motion app on your phone. If you use your laptop or PC, just make sure you use Google Chrome as your browser because that will work best. Microsoft Edge or Safari will cause the program to bug out. That brings me back to the starting screen, you'll see once you logged in into the software. On the left side, below your profile picture and name, you can find the import slash upload videos tab. Click the tab and drag the video you want to import in the squared off region. Once the video is imported, you can click the done icon. The next thing to do is to request an AI report for that video. To request this report, you need to spend an AI credit. These AI credits you can buy by clicking the Buy AI Credits tab on the upper right. They will cost you at the time of recording $20 per credit if you buy 5 or less, 15 per unit if you buy 6 to 49 credits, or $12.5 per unit if you buy 50 to 250 credits. If you need more than 250 credits, you can contact the customer service for a custom price. Now that you have bought some AI credits, to request the AI report, there is one last thing you need to do and that is to create a team and athletes within that team, so they can be assigned to the video of their run. To create one, go to the Teams tab, tap the plus add team icon and name your team. Next go to the Athletes tab and create your athletes profile. Fill in all the requested parameters and save the profile. Sometimes when I try to fill in the arm span and leg length, the system bugs out and doesn't save. 
If that happens to you, just contact the ViewMotion team and they will input the data for you. Once that is done, you can assign the athlete to his or her video. You can also add some tags so you can easily search the video in the future. And now you can finally spend the AI credit and request the AI report. The process of creating the report can take one to two days, but once it is finished, you'll get an email notification and you'll be able to click on the grid icon of the video you submitted and you'll be able to scroll down and either click the go to results highlights or graphs videos images tab. If you click the results highlights, you'll be redirected to the following page with a base overview of the analyzed video. As you can see, we got a quick overview of the max speed, average step length and ground contact time and much more. If you scroll down, you get an even more in-depth summary where you can even see the graphs of the most important parameters. So a lot of data you can analyze in this step. But the graphs and numbers are often easier to comprehend and translate to practice if they are combined with visuals. And that's where the graphs videos images page comes in handy. If you click this, you'll open up six AI enhanced video files and below that some more raw data graphs. For the enhanced videos, you'll get a normal zoomed in shot following the athlete a second video of the same zoomed in shot but with a stick figure overlay, a third video with the wide view of the full cover distance, but in this video, like you can see, you'll only see the stick figure and lane highlighted. Fourth, you got once again the same stick figure video, but this time layered on top of the real video. For the fifth and sixth video file, we got the stick figure video and the one with the original video in the back, but this time the software has taken freeze frames at specific important points of the run, like touchdown, toe off and mid stance. This way you get a perfect kinogram you can compare to previous runs without doing any work. As you see, this is a lot of high value data and as a coach, this kind of data is the bread and butter of our work. If you present this to an athlete, however, they might feel overwhelmed and don't know what to do with it. To help you with that, the program creates a report that you can hand to the athlete. If you click the My Report tab on the lower left side, you can scroll through all the reports that have been created. If we click on one of them, it will open your PDF reader and you'll see a nice report where your run gets compared to your previous runs, your group, your cohort and the rest of the world. You'll also get your kinograms and a step-by-step -step patterns graph. So a much more digestible report, which you can discuss with your athlete without them losing track of the important stuff due to the overload of information. Do notice, however, that acceleration reports will look different from max velocity slash upright sprinting reports. One of the main differences is the absence of the KPI pentagram that shows you how you score on different upright running parameters. Now that we covered the most important parts of this software, let's discuss a few more points, because while this program has a lot of value already, there are a few side notes to make and hurdles that need to be taken to make this the go-to program for sprint and speed coaches. The first big question you might have is probably about the accuracy and validity. In the FAQ of the Motion IQ program, they state that the system has been validated against Laser, Vicon and the Microgate system. So as far as that goes, it looks like you don't need to worry about the accuracy and validity. And like any AI system, it only gets better the more you feed it. However, because this is momentarily in beta phase, the potential for growth can only be achieved if enough coaches and athletes use the system and feed it with their sprints and accelerations. And that brings me to the next point of discussion, filming other points of view, like from the front and back, or filming other track and field events like the hurdles or a long jump run up. At the moment, I haven't been able to test any of these myself, but I have seen videos of all the CEO Stu McMillan analyzing the front view of some of his athlete sprints, and I've also seen Australian hurdler Abby Tadeo analyze a hurdle run. I have no idea if this is already built into the software beta or if this will be implemented in a coming update. But add-ons like this will probably make or break this software because the more types of views and events that can be analyzed, the more coaches and athletes from different events can use this. Let us know in the comments how you look at this kind of software and like the video if you want to help the channel grow, it would mean the world to us.